What's going on everybody? Thank you for coming back to the Realty One Stop YouTube channel. Today we are making a video talking about growing your income on your path to financial freedom. So this is a the second video in a four part series and again we're going to focus on how to grow your income to become financially free. I'm going to link to the other videos in the description, so if you haven't seen part one, you can check that out, and when three and four are released, you'll be able to see all of those from the description links. And if you are here to learn about financial freedom, uh, please like and subscribe, and if you have any feedback, comments, or questions, please leave them uh, in the comment section. I am planning to make video responses to each question I get from the audience, so um, please feel free to leave me your questions if you have any specific questions uh, about financial freedom, real estate, businesses, or any of the things that we're going to cover in today's video. And I want to start by saying that when you're on the path to financial freedom, your income can kind of be looked at as a speedometer, right? When you're driving your car, you're going down the highway at 60 miles an hour, that's your speedometer. And your income is, is kind of the gauge in the same way. And what I mean by that is you're only going to be able to go as fast as your income allows you to when you're on your journey to financial freedom. So your income is a massive component to this, to this equation. Um, and I'm gonna go over um, some strategies on how to increase your income. And I want to show you guys, you know, tangible data on why that's so important. Um, so I'm going to start by giving you guys a hypothetical scenario. Okay, let's say you are working a low-income job. You're making thirty thousand a year, you know, as a waitress or or something to that effect. Uh, at that income level, it's already going to be difficult, as you know, most of you probably know, to just pay your basic living expenses. Okay. Um, but let's just say you watch my step one video and you practice all of those to the extremes and you're very frugal and let's say you can save one third of that 30,000 okay and for these scenarios we're not going to get like too technical on tax brackets or anything like that so we're going to use big round numbers so you know please don't don't focus on on those um, details here let's just you know use a, a general uh, example here um, so let's just say you're to save a third of your income, right? And you are living off just 20,000 a year, which is obviously very difficult. Um, and you're able to take that one third, which is the $10,000, and you're able to invest that into some sort of reliable vehicle uh, and make a 10% annualized return, okay? If you could struggle through this for 10 years, making 30,000 a year, and you're able to invest 10,000 every year and get a 10% return that you compound, meaning you take your return and then reinvest it into that same vehicle. After a 10 year period, you would have invested 106,000 with the compounding and that total investment would be worth somewhere around 190,000. Okay. So 10 years of your life and you're living bare bones, scraping by, you know, paycheck to paycheck. And after all that time, effort, and struggle, you would have invested a, uh, a net worth increase of $200,000, $190,000, right? So clearly, using that as an example, when you're only making $30,000 a year, it's going to be very difficult to reach financial freedom in any sort of you know, reasonable time frame, okay? So the purpose of this video is I want to show you the power of going from wherever you're at now, your starting point, to where you can get and how increasing your income is such a powerful tool in this equation that we're, we're discussing here. Okay, so using that same example, let's say you're able to get up to $200,000 a year in income. Okay, and let's just say you weren't as frugal as the first person, but you could only save, you know, half of your income. So you're living off $100,000 and for most people that would be a very comfortable living, right? Uh, and you're able to invest the other half. So you, you live off 100000 and you're saving 100000 okay? If you also took that income and got a reliable 10% annualized return, you invested your returns into a compounding structure, after, after, 10, or after just uh, five years, you would have invested $580,000 counting your compounding, 
and your net worth would have grown by over $800,000 in this example, okay? So again, now you're in half the time living off half of your income and you would have created an $800,000 investment in this example, okay? Now, in that example, you could obviously save even more, right? You don't need $100,000. Most people, most markets in the world and in, in, in America do not need $100,000 to pay for living expenses. So in that example, you could probably invest like 75, 80% of your income uh, and basically compound and increase that effect even higher, okay? But I know that's a lot of numbers and, and, and a lot of math, um, but what I, what I want you to take away from that example and those examples is a, a simple idea, okay? So the easiest way to look at this is you have three levers when it comes to uh, financial freedom, okay? You can uh, increase your income, so how much do you make, that's one lever, okay? That's something that obviously could go up or down. Your savings rate, how much percentage of your income can you save? Okay, if you're making 100,000, can you save half? Okay, that's a 50% savings rate, that's $50,000 that you could potentially invest. Okay, another factor to consider with that is, you know, obviously your life situation, how frugal are you able to be, and what debts do you have, right? Because like we talked about in the part one video, you know, if you have $2,000 or $5,000 a month in debts you have to service, you have to pay to survive, then that's going to drastically reduce what you're able to invest, right? Which is why in step one, we talk about how, you know, financial literacy and budgeting is so important because that allows you to take that extra income when you get to this point and capitalize on it, okay? And the third lever is how much of a return can you reliably achieve, okay? And I'm not gonna get too too far into the weeds today on investing because that's the part three video that we're gonna cover next week. Um, but what I want you to take away is that those are the three levers that you really have control over to an extent, okay? How much can you make? How much can you save? And then how much can you invest and reasonably expect as a return, okay? So in my, in my example of me, you know, what I just did the last six years on my journey, uh, it took me six years to reach financial freedom. And in my case, I averaged anywhere from 60 to 90 hours a week of work uh, doing my W-2 job and my businesses and my investing, okay? Um, so what those three levers are gonna determine for you is how long this journey takes, okay? I've seen people reach financial freedom in as little as like two years or less. I've seen people who take, you know, the whole 45 typical work years that most people have. You know, if you start working in your early 20s and you don't retire till you're 65, then that's, you know, 40, 45, 50 year time span and everything in between. And then obviously a lot of people, unfortunately, don't reach financial freedom ever. And I'm hoping that, you know, if you're watching this video, that's not going to be you. So. Those three levers will determine your time frame to reach financial freedom, okay? That's the only thing I really want you to take away from, from what we've talked about. Now, there's a spectrum like we just like, like we just covered, right? If you're only you know living off twenty thousand dollars a year, you're gonna struggle with that. So what I want you to understand is on this spectrum, you can determine how uncomfortable you're willing to live, right? The less you can live on, the more you can invest. But I'm, what I want you to understand is that you don't have to suffer. You don't have to be miserable. Um, you know, you don't have to not take a vacation ever again. You don't have to work 90 hours a week like I did sometimes. Um, those are the choices you have to determine on how bad you want to be financially free and how long are you willing to wait, right? How long are you willing to work towards this? Because if you're okay working 45, 50 years, you know, like most people do or are expected to do, then you can live as comfortable as you want, as, as your life will allow, you know, put away a couple hundred bucks in retirement accounts or whatever, and, and just plan on working until you're, you know, old age, and that's fine, you know, that's okay. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that's not what you wanna do, and that's what we're talking about, is, is to not have to do that, right? So. Again, though, understand it is a spectrum. You can choose your level of discomfort. You can choose how long this is gonna take you. And those levers we talked about are going to be the variables that factor into that equation, all right? 
So, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, yeah, if I made $200,000 a year, then of course I wouldn't be broke. You know, that's a ton of money, and it is. But what I want to discuss is that I truly believe that anyone who's willing to work hard for it, put their mind to it, take some risk, is able to make $200,000 a year. Most people, the vast majority, okay? And I'm going to cover some different options and ideas on how to raise your income. And hopefully one or multiple of these will apply to your life and your situation, okay? So the easiest, most basic thing we can do, and I'm assuming that most of you watching this are probably working a regular, you know, W-2 or 9 to 5 type of job. Uh, so the first thing you can do is ask for a raise, ask for a promotion, try to change roles within the company you already work for to get into a higher paying position. Something that I want to stress, especially, you know, right now in 2022, this is one of the most favorable markets in the history of the economy for employees. You guys have a ton of leverage. There is massive labor shortages in almost every sector, okay? I, I can tell you from experience, trying to hire right now is brutally impossible. It's almost impossible, okay? Finding reliable people who want to work. It's very difficult. So that gives the employees a ton of leverage in these situations, okay? It may not last forever, but at the time being, you certainly have an opportunity to try to negotiate a raise or a better role or something, okay? Um, obviously, the more obvious things you can do, work overtime, pick up extra shifts if, you, if you're a shift worker. You know, I was a police officer, you know, so we could work overtime, we could pick up shifts. Um, volunteer for like maybe third shift if that has a pay differential. You know, if it pays a shift differential, you can make an extra couple bucks or five bucks an hour just by going to a different shift. Um, volunteer to work holidays if, if you're uh, in a business that works on holidays and you can get extra pay. So there are things that you should be obvious, but that you may not be doing now, that you can do right away to go ahead and boost your income, okay? Now, some of the more difficult things are, you know, go get a higher paying job, right? I mean, it might sound obvious, but that's obviously scary to a lot of people. You don't want to leave where you're comfortable. But if this, if financial freedom is something that you're very genuinely serious about, if it's something you are going to dedicate a big chunk of your time and efforts to achieving, which you're going to have to do if, if you're serious about this, then take that leap. Go get a better paying job. Maybe it's not something you want to do. And, and you know, most people don't have jobs that they love. Um, but if you can get in a position to make more money that speeds up this timeline we're talking about, I personally think it's worth it because having that freedom on the other side of that journey is worth the struggles that it takes to get there, in my opinion. That's why I did it. Now, you could obviously change career fields, maybe get into something that, that pays better. You could obviously go back to school, get a degree, get a trade skill. I can tell you right now from personal experience, trade skills are massively needed. You can make a ton of money in the trades, especially if you're licensed. Um, you know, licensed plumber, electrical, HVAC, you can make a ton of money. You know, um, even, in, even in my market here in Ohio, I mean, the trades are making, uh, unlicensed trades are making 20, 30 bucks an hour. Licensed trades are making 50, 75, 100 bucks an hour. You can make a lot of money in the trades. So if you're doing something, uh, making less money than that, that is an, uh, a quicker option to, to make more money. And I mean, the, the bottom line is, you know, obviously I can't answer every single scenario that you may be in, but just understand that when you get a skill that is in high demand and high impact, that's how you get high pay, right? So if you're in a field that is low demand and low need, you're just not going to have the same leverage to make that kind of money, okay? Another very important idea I want to make sure everyone understands, okay? You need, you don't need to, but I recommend you try to get a job that is production-based. And what I mean by that is it's not based on hours worked, right? So, for example, I'm going to give you some, some examples. When you work a production-based job like sales, writing a book, writing songs, writing blog posts, making YouTube videos like this, your income becomes unattached to the time worked, right? Uh, let's use sales for an example, okay? I'm a real estate agent, I sell houses, right? I am not paid by the hour, I am paid by the production of the volume of houses I sell. My commissions are based on the sales and my sales are based on my marketing, my expertise, my network, 
you know, building relationships with my clients, that is not specifically tied to hours, right? So I could technically become the biggest agent in Ohio or Cincinnati and not work any more hours than I already do. I just have to build out my marketing and my relationships and my network, okay? Build out a team, you know, leverage people, not hours worked, okay? So I, I just want you guys to understand that if you're in you know, a low income job, if you have the right skill sets, the right personality, the right traits, or you're willing to develop them, you can go and get into a field that is not related to your hours worked and that is one of the most powerful ways to build higher income and get you to that 200,000 or higher mark in a quick amount of time. And you don't need a degree in most cases. Um, so that is something I, I highly recommend for a lot of people. Okay. Other options you have, you know, start a side hustle, start a small business. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard every single person on the internet talking about this. Um, and what I'll say about that is make sure it's something that's profitable, right? Like I, I don't want you to, when I say side hustle, I don't mean go drive Uber that you're going to make, you know, 15 bucks an hour doing it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying don't drive Uber. What I'm saying is I'm talking about building something that is profitable and has the ability again to be unattached for your time work. Okay. When you drive an Uber, you, you can't, you have to physically be in the car driving people, right? So you're still attaching a dollar per hour task to your time. Okay. So what I mean by side hustle or, or building out of a small business, make something that is able to be scaled later. That doesn't necessarily require you to be involved for every hour of pay. Okay. And another important aspect of building out your own business, and just like me as an example, now that I've shifted out of my W-2 job and went into my businesses and investing full time, I am now able to take those businesses that I slowly build up over four or five years and massively scale them up, which is what I worked on last year and I'm working on this year. Because by scaling those, that further detaches my time from the pay, right? As I scale it up and I bring on new employees, uh, you know, leveraging the people asset in my businesses is how I scale the income and revenue. Okay. So just understand that if you start building something out, even if you're at your W2 job, you have the ability later to pull that lever even further and ratchet up that business to hopefully increase more, create more revenue and income. Okay. So another idea that I want to, uh, you know, make sure everyone watching this understands is that Generally speaking, not, not everybody, but for most people, most careers, most jobs, most businesses, you, your income and your value in that position is directly related to the problems you solve. Okay. The more problems you solve, typically the more income you can make. And again, not to just keep, you know, using Jeff Bezos as an example, but he's like the ultimate extreme of, you know, most of these ideas. He solved problems that we didn't even know we had, and we didn't even imagine 25 years ago, right? You know, who would have thought 25 years ago you could click a button on your phone and get your groceries delivered to your house or a TV or anything like that, you know, and I, I know some Amazon locations deliver in like two hours, right? So just to use as an example, Jeff Bezos is a billionaire and probably going to be a trillionaire before he dies because he solves some of the most incredible problems for the most people millions and millions of people use amazon that's why he's one of the most ultra wealthy people in history okay so again using that as an extreme example when you solve problems in the marketplace you are more valuable okay so just keep that idea in the back of your head and like i mentioned you know try to shift your income away from hours worked whenever you're tied to a job that is specifically tied to your hours worked, it's going to be very hard to lever that to a high income. You know, there are professions that are high income that are directly related to your hours worked, but it's very difficult to scale that to a point that is uh, going to get you, you know, to where you want to go. Uh, and another key idea here is that as your income grows over time, okay, and I've heard this called income creep, I've heard it called other things. But as your income grows over time, you want to try to keep your expenses as low as you possibly can. So at the, at the baseline they're at or lower, 
because if you're making $30,000 a year right now and your expenses are $28,000 a year and you're saving $2,000 a year, if you get up to that $100,000 or $200,000 in income and you keep your expenses at you know $28,000, you've now created a $72,000 savings rate where you can invest that amount or you know close to it and have a massive impact. But if you are making $30,000 a year and spending $30,000 and then you go to $100,000 a year and you're spending $100,000, You've effectively not changed your financial position at all, okay? And I've known people who make five hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year who are broke. They spend all the money they get as soon as they get it. So what I want you to understand is that if you raise your income, like we're talking about here, and you spend it all, it's not going to give you any net difference in your financial position. So make sure as you increase your income, you do your best to keep your expenses as low as you possibly can. Okay, uh, and speaking of which, talking about saving money, uh, something I want to mention is that right now in the market we're in, you know, we're in uh, January of 2022, cash on hand is one of the least valuable assets you can have. What I mean by that is the last uh, numbers I saw was a, they're projecting a 7% inflation rate, okay, which, you know, who knows if that's even uh, accurate, it could be higher than that. But let's just assume 7% is accurate. That means for every hundred thousand dollars in cash you have you're losing seven thousand dollars in value every year that that sits in your bank so the the idea here and what i want you to understand is that you only want to have as much cash on hand as you need for emergencies to avoid going into bad debt so if you watched uh you know the part one video if you haven't go watch it but if you if you've watched it then you understood the breakdown of good debts and bad debts and we want to avoid bad debts whenever possible, right? So for me, in my personal life, in my situation, I only keep as much liquid cash in my personal accounts as to avoid going into any sort of personal debt, bad debt, right? So for example, if my furnace goes out, I want to make sure I have enough cash to fix it or replace it, okay? That's an example. Outside of that, all of my liquid cash that I get, I immediately dump back into my investments because... One, if I'm in, if I'm investing in things that are, you know, helped by inflation, which is what we'll talk about next week, then you're going to not only grow your money with inflation, but you're going to avoid losing it by inflation. But on top of that, I'm going to make sure that I don't have a ton of cash sitting in the bank that's just getting chewed up by inflation. So again, my personal recommendation is keep enough cash for emergencies don't have a ton of cash sitting on the sidelines that, that's doing nothing but devaluing, okay? And if you do all the things that we talked about in this video, right? If you do some of these strategies to raise your income, no matter what your position is, okay? I try to outline, you know, 10 or 15 different actionable items that no matter what scenario you're in right now in your life, there's things you can do to improve your income. But if you do the things we talked about today, this will position you quickly for our next video, which will be to how to take that extra income that now you're, you know, hopefully increasing your income. You've learned how to budget, you're saving money, you're not wasting it, you're not losing it. And now once you have that excess income coming in, you've hopefully paid off some of those bad debts, you're going to be in a strong financial position to go into the step three, part three video, which is how to grow your money, how to grow your wealth to reach financial freedom, okay? So again, thank you for watching this video. If you've learned something, please like the video, subscribe. Please feel free to share this video with someone that you may benefit from learning about financial freedom. If you haven't checked out the other videos, please do so. And uh, again, part three will be out next week and part four the week after that. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them in the uh, comments below. Again, I am happy to make video responses to your questions. So please leave me what you have. Again, thank you for watching the Realty One Stop <clears throat> YouTube channel, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks.